The 3D models in this video were made by Kuzim, or Adam Midzuk, and the animations were made by Tyler Addison. Their socials will be included in the description and the comment section below. Madagascar has been the location for a great many twists and turns in evolution. Originally attached to Africa, with the help of sponsors like South America, Antarctica, and India, it played host to plenty of the lineages which many of us identify with the much larger continents. Those uniquely beautiful lifeforms which inhabit the island today may have more connections with India and Africa. If I were to dig back through time, it is quite clear much older fossil fauna of Madagascar had stronger connections to Antarctica, South America, and India, with which it was most closely attached during the Mesozoic era. It might be hyperbolic to say, but during the Mesozoic, Madagascar was a land of crocs. Though few, if any, true crocodilians are known from Mesozoic Madagascar. It was home to many forms which resembled our modern water bees to greater or lesser degrees. These distant cousins took on the shapes which would later be adapted by the alligator or the crocodile, as well as shapes we are unfamiliar with, long-legged landlubbers with a taste for bugs, plants, or dinosaurs. Among the forms which shucked off their landlubbing ways to take full advantage of the lakes, streams, and rivers of Mesozoic Madagascar were the Mahajungasuchus, a critter which I have dubbed the Marauder Croc. During the field season of 1995, a joint expedition of crews from the Stony Brook University of New York and the University of Antananarivo, known as the Mahajanga Basin Project, which was started in 1993 and continues to this day, found some rather interesting blocks of fossils. After all was said and done, a fragmentary skeleton of most of the spinal column, parts of the shoulder and pelvic girdles, as well as major portions of all four legs and the lower jaw of a large crocodile-like animal were collected and prepared and eventually described in 1998 by Dr. George Buckley and Dr. Christopher Brochu. They named the critter Mahajangasuchus insignis, meaning extraordinary croc from Mahajanga. These bones were uncovered from the northeastern corner of Madagascar in a region called the Mahajanga Basin, which is a depression filled with sediment many kilometers in scope. This area is the most fossil rich, with many subsequent expeditions since 1995 uncovering quintuple the diversity of organisms as was previously known. The skeleton unearthed belonged to a croc-like animal but exactly what the entire head looked like and therefore exactly what this animal was doing with it wasn't an easy answer until more skull fossils were found over the next few years. All subsequent finds helped piece together the skull. When all known fossil material was combined, a nearly complete skeleton of the animal materialized. The skull of Mahajangasuchus is a big rounded square lump of solid bone. From the side, it almost looks like the lower jaw is thicker than the upper jaw, and both are studded with varying sizes of conical teeth. Mahajangasuchus teeth are more or less shaped like modern crocodile teeth. The one exception is the dramatic size difference. The mouth of Mahajangasuchus is wavy, with a kink in the jaw near the front of the mouth. The lower jaw is extremely thick at the back and relatively thin at the front. Something I've noticed in the bones which has gone unnoticed in many reconstructions is an extremely large depression or socket in the lower jaw where the big fang-like tooth of the upper jaw slots into. Many modern crocs have a similar structure, but nothing this extreme. Big teeth call for big holsters. But what was the critter using such short, thick teeth for? The good old crunch and munch technique, of course. The skull suggests large muscles were used to close the mouth incredibly fast and deliver a strong, bone-shattering bite. The teeth reflect this as they are fat and conical, not made for snagging fish, not meant for slicing flesh, not even for the puncture-slice-pull method of tyrannosaur teeth. No, these tooth were meant to slam into the flesh and bones of larger animals to deliver a powerful bite, hold on to the prey item, and drag the poor hapless victim to the depths, or at least whatever part of the animal it had in its jaws. The body of the animal was decked out in a suit of osteoderms, like all members of this group of not-so-crocs. Osteoderms are little pieces of bone which rest within the skin and are often capped with a layer of super hard material called keratin. 
which also makes up our fingernails, parts of our skin, hair, bird beaks, and even rhino horns. Osteoderms were some of the most abundant fossils of the critter found at the dig site, with small square and oval-shaped ones all over the place. The proportions of the body and legs of Mahajangasuchus are not all that different from modern crocs. The leg bones of Mahajangasuchus do look a tad longer than something like an alligator, but this may be due to how the skeleton is posed in this diagram. See, here's the skeleton of an alligator. Most living crocs and gators hold their limbs in both a semi-squat position close to their bodies and as close to the ground as they can to conserve as much energy when moving around on land. Their legs are longer than they usually look as crocs and gators don't usually extend them to their full length. Sometimes, to get across a patch of land quickly and without sliding on their bellies, they'll fully extend their legs in what is called a high walk, where they look almost dinosaurian in how straight they hold their legs, but not quite. This is the pose that Mahajangasuka skeleton is in, but it's unclear if they would have held their bodies like this all the time and they were just longer legged than modern crocs, or if they were almost exactly like them in the way they held their bodies. Let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to get an idea of how big this beast would have been. When it comes to crocs, there is a proportionality between how big the head is and how big the body is, and this is seen in all modern crocs. It can help estimate the length of the body if all you have is a head. According to these calculations, Mahajangasuchus has been estimated to reach about 3 meters, or 10 feet in length, with older individuals having a possible length of up to 3.5 meters, or 11.5 feet. They may have weighed around 360 to 400 kilograms, or about 800 pounds, making them the largest crocs in the region at the time. With the dentition and jaws of an excavation shovel, Mahajangasuchus may have been capable of dining on dinosaurs. At the time, Madagascar was home to all of the different groups you're familiar with from the Cretaceous period, all of which were smaller in size because of the island nature of Madagascar. Small species and young individuals of the sauropod dinosaurs would have been the best large prey items for these crocs, with larger individuals waiting for the right opportunity to burst from their watery cover, snag a leg or neck, and pull the animal to a premature watery grave or just the legged bit, having torn it completely free of the now screaming animal. Mahajangasuchus remains were uncovered from the Maverano Formation. No one has yet been able to date this layer of rock directly. There has been no radiometric testing done to determine half-lives of the radioactive isotopes which may be present. There are a few clues which we can use to give a rough estimate as to when this layer was laid down. The magnetic poles switch or move every couple thousand years. It takes a few thousand years for them to switch, and this leaves a mark in the rock record which we can find and measure. This can give a rough estimate as to when a layer of rock was laid down, as the metals present in the sediments during burial were oriented towards the poles. If we compare that direction with the poles today, and contrast that with the kinds of fossils found in that layer, a good chunk of time can be slapped onto that layer. The closest reversal to the late Cretaceous time frame estimated for the Maverano Formation is one that occurred 65.8 million years ago. This means the top of this layer of rock has to be, at most, 65.8 million years old. This makes the layer below it somewhere close to the Maastrichtian age. This time frame saw the KT mass extinction at 66 million years ago. And this means all of the fauna preserved in the Maverano Formation were also present at the end of the Age of the Dinosaurs. Which means Mahajangasuchus was marked for death, even if they didn't go extinct before the meteorite hit. The rocks preserve evidence of parched dryland soils in the form of coarse-grained sandstones and dunes, as well as impressions where roots used to be and calcium carbonate residues which were left when water dried up. Seasonal flooding occurred throughout the many thousands of millions of years of this rock layer. Fine-grained sand deposits were also found, but with less frequency, which means water carried the tiny grains of sand through the region only occasionally, which is consistent with seasonal flooding. The dry season constricted the width and amount of water flow, and the wet season produced much larger continuous bodies of water. It was these rivers which Mahajangasuchus may have taken as its territory so all the animals it lived with would have to make sure to keep an eye out when going for a drink. 
If, for whatever reason, the little pug croc Simasukas decided to come take a drink by the water's edge at night, it had to be cautious for Mahajangasuka shared this land and time and may have lurked at the water's edge or even on the banks for just an opportunistic midnight snack. Though Mahajangasuchus was smaller than the biggest dinosaurs in Cretaceous Madagascar, it had the jaw power to keep it safe from the likes of the short-legged mouth on legs that was Majangasaurus. Since Majangasaurus was the only other large predator that is known from this time and place, Mahajangasuchus seems to have been at a beneficial spot in the non-existent predator hierarchy. Mahajangasuchus is so unique it has been placed within a group named after it. Mahajangasukidae is a small group of crocs with the only other currently known member being Caprasuchus. There are distinct characteristics within the skull bones linking Mahajangasuchus of Madagascar and Caprasuchus of Niger as close relatives. Features uniting the two include similar looking skulls in their protrusions and tusks, squinted eye sockets, horn-like crests of bone sticking out of the backside of the top of their skulls, and the ends of their lower jaws extending beyond the end of the skull, and more. Mahajangasuchus, despite the lack of press, is a very interesting creature. It convergently evolved on a similar niche as modern crocs and gators which specialize in pulverizing bone, which takes down large animals without ever letting go. In doing so, Mahajangasuka's jaws became reinforced to cope with the stress such a lifestyle brings and teeth equipped for the job. Though they were successful, island life is always more susceptible to extinction than mainland organisms, and any creatures that make their way to islands can have adverse effects on the natives. But it is more likely these animals went extinct due to the KT mass extinction, since they were alive and kicking right up until the end. Mahajangasukas merch is now available on the Edge Redbubble. Support my artists and I via links in the description and comment section below. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.